of the 2022 season. Ain't that a shame? And it is. So we're going to get them towels. Towel of shame. Tony Dunn, lead us off. This is uh, the part of the show where we kind of just call out the worst play, worst person, whatever you guys want to throw the cold, wet towel of shame on. Um, And to be honest, I don't have a super guilty party in this one. Um, And I'm probably unprepared. Oh, I got it. This is gonna this is gonna get us canceled. Oh boy. Cancel yeah. it. Do Don't it. do it. No, it's we so just, bad. We, we just got a fan base, dude. Don't I know. cancel I'm this. I'm about to end it. Is there any oh. irony? All right, so what did we hear for the last week or whatever? Uh it's Damar Hamlin, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. All we have heard is people tell us shame people for not having enough empathy or care or whatever it is. We've heard the super camaraderie of the world that has locked <clears throat> arms together behind somebody's tra- a tragedy. It's a straight tragedy. Mm-hmm. And I do not want to diminish it at all. But then the one thing, though, that has been wild is the religious impulse by a lot of people who have had a giant like they religious shame people uh, for not caring enough maybe or something like this and like you have people praying on good whatever and if you know what i'm saying like and i'm catholic i'm christian so i believe in what i believe in right but i ain't trying to anyway is there any irony and that DeMar Hamlin, as they a kickoff return for a touchdown, amazing, Too wonderful, awesome. wild. Does anybody know what he tweeted? No, what did he say yesterday or uh, no, as they oh, returned the touchdown? Oh, no, OMF, OMFG. <laughs> That's funny, dude. No, it's not. It is. It's it not is. funny as everybody yes, has religious locked arms and then you use the actual thing that you shame and believe in in vain. And I and I Dude, say curse funny. words all the time, but is there any irony? It doesn't matter. We're all sinners, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. I'm a. Is you know, there I'm no irony in you being a moment where you said give every? All right. How about this? If I said. If I scored a touchdown, give and then you came up to me with a microphone and I say I give it all up to God, right? And then I walked off and stubbed my toe and said GD. Is there no irony in that? Yeah, but are you saying okay? That's you're, it. You're, you're, That's my right. tell of shame. My tell of shame is using the Lord's name in vain while everybody has shamed everybody for not caring enough and then use their religious prayers and pr- prayers up and all of this. And I'm and I'm religious. I went to church this morning. I'm just not trying to shame you with my own religion. Uh, do you feel like it's sort of like uh, I've done this before. I did this recently um, talking to somebody and I now like in church. And uh, they'll say something that I agree with, and I'll be like, "Hell yeah!" I'm like in church, <laughs> saying, Hell "Right, yeah. right." Is there? And, and look, as somebody said in the in the chat, he said he didn't see say it, but actually he did say GD no, he because said, he, he spelled it, it. like he, he literally it. spelled GD. So you're right. So you're even, um, what do you call abbreviating what you want me to say? I'm not upset. I say that crap all the time, bro. I am. What I'm just saying, is there any irony? I mean, of course. But there, there's irony in every aspect of religion, isn't there? Okay. Can you say the same that's thing me. for 90% that's my of people? That's my talent shame of a yeah. lot of irony when all... 
I just really don't like people guilting. And he didn't do this. I'm not saying he guilted anybody. But for the last, and I didn't even see this today, is uh, supposedly I saw a clip. I didn't even press play about like Strahan's message to Skip Bayless. As any, I haven't, and supposedly he said something on the phone, like, uh, like addressed it. I don't even care. What I'm saying is this is I, the most guilt I feel in my life is about myself. And I don't need to shame none of y'all with all of this. And that's it's just the irony. The irony of people who will smash other motherfuckers all day long and then stub their toe and do the same thing. And I'm not saying he did that, but it just made me think about it. That's my talent. Thing. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my <laughs> towel of shame. Me off. I told you I'm a mess. What? I'm so a mess today. It's the end. Uh, my towel of shame is gonna be very short, very sweet, very simple. I'm not gonna put it on one single player in this game at the end of the year. I'm not doing it. I'm putting it on Rat Mule. That's right. That guy who brought this team in, down into the dumpster. And 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 just really ruined this team in such a way that had us feeling so bad about the Panthers for so long, dude. I'm so happy you're gone. Uh, if I never hear your name again, it'll be too soon. And uh, I hope Nebraska goes on to lose every game for the next four <laughs> years or, or the next seven years, however long it takes you to build a program. You don't tell the. I shame. didn't. I didn't uh, hate Nebraska before this moment. Not this moment, but before Matt Rat. You were rooting for them to fail. I'm not even eating corn anymore, man. What you talking about? I know. Like, you know what? We're going all uh, diet drinks. No corn (laughs) corn starch syrup, man. Only fake sugar, which I love, by the way. Whatever Splenda is, I love it. I drank Coke Zero all day. Anyway, who's next? Yeah, well. Uh, I'll drop mine real quick. Uh, mine's going to go to, and I just want to say beforehand, I, I'm i a believer that sometimes the only way to settle things is with a good fight and fisticuffs. I believe sometimes that's the way to solve a problem. It's not always, and it shouldn't be the first one, but sometimes it is. But you definitely never try to punch somebody with a helmet on. Like, it's just it's stupid. Oh, we like, did like, not like, even like, talk like, about place. this today. We didn't talk about it at all. I figured we would Tuesday. Uh, I'm icing up De- Deontay Foreman uh, and the guy who hit him first. Uh, for Like, guys, why, why should they have been kicked out? Oh god! Yeah, they both should. Have. Really? Yeah, yeah. Zero tolerance. Yeah, for sure. yeah zero tolerance. You Bro, we see punches. way more shit than that on the NFL. Not anytime like there's a that swing was... like that, dude. Yeah. Anytime there's you a swing, you swing, you should be. I can't out. remember the last time I remember. Uh, I can't tell you the last time I saw someone get kicked out of a game. I think it I think happened today, it and they threw a swing. You know, I think it happened today on the Cowboys game too. Really. Yeah. But yeah, but I might see him up, man. Just know know where you're at. You know, this whole game when he's running, every time he gets stopped for a short run, he's like beating himself up like he's got a goal for the day he's trying to accomplish. And then the first time somebody starts talking trash to you, and granted, the guy hit him first, but why swing back? Like the guy's wearing a helmet. Like he I, did I it shoved him like, first. Foreman did so. There must what well, I would expect is something happened in the scrum mm-hmm. and Foreman was upset, but Foreman did do this little chest shove and then what was what's his name he was the first round davenport pick him. davenport yeah. yeah slapped him mm-hmm. which he got the foul if deontay would have held anything, back yeah. that would have been a personal time. foul mm-hmm. i still would not have expected them to kick him out i was surprised by that well, well you could actually see with the refs too the first flag came in when the first it was right beside him the ref and, was like then, yeah, and the second ref didn't throw a flag till he saw Foreman throw a fist or a hand, whatever. And that was when the second flag came in. Yeah, Foreman wouldn't have been penalized at all if he didn't throw that second. He hand. didn't see. Like, yeah, the ref didn't see the first little, sh- mm-hmm. sh- but he saw this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really surprised they got kicked out of the game. That's yeah. it. Uh, Talish <clears throat> shame to Deontay Foreman. Uh, CK, what you got? I'm gonna give a talus shame to good old Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen came in here. Not only did we screw them by not winning last week, we came in here and beat them this week, which meant it was going to be irrelevant anyway. 
they had one drive that they were able to score a touchdown and we somehow still won when we had no offensive weapons scoring a touchdown. Like it was literally a fumble recovery. That was our, our lone touchdown. Our only other point was because they missed a field goal, which gave us a short field and allowed us to get a, a field goal within uh, a few minutes of the uh, final uh, buzzer, if you will. So I say ice up to Dennis Allen. Uh, he's a first year head coach. Um, everybody's talking about um, Sean Payton going somewhere else. I don't know if he's not every, he might go back to the saints at this point. Who knows? The Seahawks just won. Did they all? Oh, so they're going to the, uh, they going to the playoffs now officially or. And um, it looked like Sean McVay just walked straight to the press box. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so all right maybe they maybe they're right maybe they're right but yeah um the seahawks won uh we'll have to wait for greg to get back for that really to truly tell me if they made it to the playoffs uh so those are the towel of shame cody we ready for the dab on them i just like doing it man dab on them folks Dab on the folk and that and that dab on the folk. They might see me. Tell me what to do. Dab on the folk. I am going first. I am gonna dab on. Nah. Should I do it? Should I just be the biggest dick to end the podcast? Do it. I'm dabbing on Chuba Hubbard for being the most average ass running back that Cody could ever consider dabbing. I'm taking him off the table. There's no way Chuba Hubbard today did enough to get dabbed on twice. So dab on them, Chuba Hubbard, for having your third best game of your career. Dab on him from saving me from having to hear Cody Lashney dab on him. I've taken him off the table he's been dabbed on cody you can't have him <laughs> oh, dab that's the first him. time right yeah. 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 this is a yeah. win i felt like i just dabbed on this podcast no. bro no, look, that no, was definitely no, a win. no that's yeah. fine you need to dab on too because you need to put some respect on that man's name so good on you tony i applaud you i am going to dab on sammy dimes baby and let me tell you why I know that the game was not great today, but if we were all going to imagine what Sam would do down the stretch for the Carolina Panthers while we were pushing to make the playoffs, we all thought he would crumble as soon as he had the opportunity to do so, and he did not. Not only did he not, but he showed improvement in so many areas that we have been saying he needed to improve upon, taking care of the football going through his progressions, and other than today, not throwing into double coverage. And, and, you know, I kind of blame that on the Michael Jordan PTSD that happened to him in the middle of the game. But anyway, I digress. The reason why I feel like it's important to dab on Sam Darnold is because on, uh, on, on and, and just, you know, going forward this year, you know, everybody's going to shit on Sam and tell you what kind of quarterback he is and, and tell you that he's used good and, and, oh, he's this and that. Dude, Sam played way better than we thought that he was going to. This is not an endorsement of him in the future, down the road, whatever. He did a damn good job and kept us in contention when it mattered the most, when Panther fans have not had a meaningful month of December in years. Sam was a big part of that. Got to put some respect on his name. Dab on that folk. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go in kind of the same manner. I'm going to dab on um, Steve Wilkes for the season that he had this year. I think that uh, whether you believe he should be the coach or not next year, I believe that what he was given and what he did was an amazing thing. Uh, I still believe that he did enough to get the job. I don't think that he will, however. Uh, but I got to give him credit for taking this team from where they were at to where we ended in the end. We didn't get the final goal of making the playoffs within the NFC South, which we had the possibility for, but he gave it a pretty good fight. And he showed more inspiration in this team than I've seen in years. I was more interested in football after he became the coach than I have been in years. And for him, I, for that, I thank him and I dab on him for that. 
you know, good season. Steve Wilkes for what you had. Go, Steve. I'm going By to way, super fast. Karen yeah. toy. Five dollars. Oh, nice. She says money. Keep pounding. Love you, Karen. Appreciate we almost you. Uh, should make CK count for when people do the gifts. When they gift the super fan, like just listen to his voice and just make him count like count one gift two. We usually read their names off. One right? gift two, such and such. <laughs> Three <laughs> gifts. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's like a kid's book. All right. Um, so I'm gonna dab on Panthers fans, and um, I know we're not Ooh, all on this cool. boat, but I'm dabbing on Panthers fans because I think this is the first time that I can remember in a while in a lost season where the majority of people in our chat, um, on social media that we know were actually hoping that we win. They were, they were torn. They were obviously looking at the negatives and the pot, like in the positives and all that stuff. But for the most part, I feel like the majority of people were rooting for the Panthers to win today, regardless of what that meant from the draft app, you know, implications. And um, I applaud you. If you're one of those fans that was rooting for this team to be a success, you know, to win this game, um, I applaud you. Um, the difference between six and nine, whereas you might feel like it's a big difference, it's not. Um, and so for those who are upset that we won this game, we're still drafting at nine. We're still in a top 10 draft position. Um, and so you can be happy that the Panthers won today. I wish it was more convincing, but you can be happy. And so for those fans that are, and that we're rooting for the Panthers to win this year, that we're rooting the entire year for us to be able to pull something out of our hats, I, I, I dab on you guys. That was the best dab of them all. Good one. That was really good. It was really good. Just like this uh, super chat right here. Dude, from Matt MJ. I love this one. With the $10 love bomb. He says, thank you for a great season. While the Panthers need a new coaching staff, the C3 podcast has a Super Bowl caliber coach in Tony Dunn, OC and Cody Lashney, DC and CK, and special team coach in the Bat Daddy Boy Toy. Hey, That's a real listener go. right there. Like, With the Bat Daddy, Daddy Boy Toy? That's what's that, up. That's, that, that's what's up, man. Oh, my goodness gracious. I also got That made dab. me feel good. Yeah, I, dude, we also have to dab on DC3 fans, man. We have met and, we have met and gotten to know so many cool people. That I feel like I know I'm going to consider friends for a long oh, yeah. time. Dude, in you guys life. are better guys friends so for cool. me than people have, and I've met you guys. <laughs> right, but like yeah. I have more friends in this chat room that I care about than people I've physically met. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <I agree. laughs> yeah dude. Uh, hey, man, C3, C3 Panther Nation, grown exponentially. We love you guys, man. Uh, and I think I speak for all of us when, you know, I don't even want to think about Panther football without thinking about the C3 Panthers podcast in conjunction with Panther football, man. The post game show, the Tuesday show, the Friday free for all. Dude, you guys make it cool. You guys are the reason why we do it, man. So shout out to the C3 Army. Yeah, it's been incredible. And in I mean, I know while we feel like there's a conclusion coming at this moment. I don't feel like there's a conclusion because I know we're going to be here on Tuesday. I know we'll be here on Friday. I know that the content is going to be revving up. I'm incredibly excited. We usually, the way I've thought about the seasons of the C3 Panthers podcast is the way I mark them is they begin the week after the Super Bowl. Right. It's like, uh, so once we get to the Super Bowl, whatever Tuesday is after the Super Bowl, I mark as the first episode of that year. It's like a new season. So we still have a few more, but we're going to follow the playoffs. We're going to follow the developments of like these coaches coming out. And then we're going to get to the draft and the comma. So the draft, the combine, the draft, all of that's part of season. This will be. It's hard to market. I started this in October, September, October of 2013. Somewhere in like that range. 
So I feel like we are, I don't know if we have to get to September for it to be our 10th year or this, we just conclude our 10th year. Either way, I'm ready to walk into this season, new coach, new circumstances, great draft, great opportunity for the same wonderful people beside me as we watch and uh, hang out with this. So my name is Tony Dunn. It's the C3 Panthers podcast brought to you by CarolinaCatChronicles.com. You can follow us on Twitter at cat underscore chronicles. Tuesday nights is our flagship ship where we hit up uh, the latest Panthers news and opinions live 9 p.m. We'll go around the horn. If you have anything you need to say, do your ac- ac- outros and let's get the heck on out of here. And maybe are there any more games tonight? Or are uh, they done? Detroit Green Bay is in about uh, an hour. Oh, nice. that's, that's, nice. the one that's, gonna, that's the one that's going to decide if Green, Bay, Green Bay's in if they win. So, um, yeah. so you and, guys uh, do your outros and help me out, and let's go. The final, uh, the final super chat of the Chocolate Espresso says now everyone go watch RRR on what Netflix. the hell is that? I watched the glass and I loved yes. it. It was fun. It was dude, fun. What's dude, RRR? RRR. I have no idea it's what it is. Movie. Dude, yeah, it's, it's a bo- it, It's a movie from India. And it might be the greatest fucking thing ever made. I Ooh, didn't even well, why are you this up? Like, I got like one three and a half hours, though. It's like three and a half oh, hours. God. Yeah, yeah, it's anybody who's movie. seen the kaleidoscope shit? I haven't watched it yet, no, but I heard good things about it. I just have one question. I only watched part of one, like the first episode, but it starts out and it says they're trying to make a different user experience for Netflix. So if you watch it and I watch it, what they said is that we might start on different episodes. Right. And I'm just yeah, interested to see uh, is I started out on the green. So I just want to know. And I've, that, I've only watched on one. Netflix? Yeah. It's, it's called Kaleidoscope. Show. Yeah. And it's got the dude from Breaking Bad from uh, Better Call Saul. The the guy that was the Mr. Chicken, the chicken dude. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. OK. OK. I know what you mean. I, haven't so I just am interested. Yet. I was like, did they just say that? And everybody starts on green. I want to know. Anyway. You guys, I'm going to watch RR because I love the glass onion and I love my son that I don't claim. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's 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 a that great movie. Good. But um, yeah, man, uh, Karen Choi was in here earlier. I think she still is in here. She asked if we're going to be doing this of the year. We don't take no days off, man. We don't None. get tired. We are year round. Uh, we are definitely going to be back. And uh, hey, man, every Friday at 7 p.m. for the Friday Free for All, where you can be a part of the show. It's the show for Panther fans, by Panther fans. Join the show via StreamYard, just like we are now. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good time. And, um, you know, we'll be doing getting into the draft content. Uh, I know a lot of people have been clamoring for that. We're going to start looking at prospects. And uh, it ought to be a good time. It ought to be a good time. All right. Who's next? Oh, and Twitter. Find me at Cody Light. At Cody Light. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, Greg looked looks like he's on the phone, so I'll go ahead and go. Um, so you can find me at Code Dizzle Allen on uh, Twitter, the, the the pretty much everywhere. Um, and uh, and I guess just here on Tuesday nights now, maybe occasionally a Friday free for all. We got to find something else to do these uh, for these weeks uh, in the off season. But um, we're gonna try to start working out some stuff. There might be uh, a, you know, some uh, appearances at. Uh, at training camp this off season or something. We'll see. We'll see what can we can get going. But yeah, you find me uh you know all those uh all those places. John Rules mad I called him the chicken dude. Sorry, <laughs> I cut off guard. Wait, wait a minute, it's like the bad guy of everybody. Yeah. The guy that paid Walter uh, White. Walter White's boss. Sorry, my name Gus Gus Frank. Frank. Yeah, and someone that's, that's, did call him the chicken dude. John, By the way, the guy John that Carlo killed his gay boyfriend. Do you remember who started the whole war? That crazy ass Mexican cartel dude did call him the chicken man when they came and brought him all that money the first time they met him. <laughs> so yeah. I'm on that. Yeah. Nah, all right, cool. uh, Greg. All right, Greg. Uh, you can find me at the Bat Daddy Fifty Two on Twitter is my personal handle. Check out my other show; it's uh, Geeks Chasing Squirrels Across the Multiverse. We go live at nine PM Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. Where we're talking about all the best books and comics and movies and television shows that are out there. So I think actually this maybe we're next month in probably February. We're going to try a new thing where 
I'm going to watch. I'm going to pick a network and watch whatever <laughs> it suggests for me to watch. That's for awesome. Whole, whole like this. So whatever this network suggests that I watch next, that's what's going to be played. Well, give so, me an example of what the network you mean. Like what kind like anything, of network? You, know, like, you go to networks and it's like, well, if you watch this, you might like this. And it tells you something to play next. Networks or Netflix? Really Networks like Netflix, different networks, yeah. Amazon Netflix, Prime, Hulu, yeah. HBO Max, okay, so you count them as networks. You don't mean like A and E or something. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Oh, I love this. I love this. I'm yeah. I'm in. All right, that's the C three Panthers post game show. Uh, get let's get the heck out of here, or I'll keep you up forever. C three Panther said. Nation, for the last time of the 2022 season, you know what we got to say, baby. Keep. Pound. Keep pounding.